G'day guys, Paul here from The Hook and the Cook. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm at the beautiful Somerset Dam. It's uh, southwest of Brisbane, probably about two hours from my place, just under two hours. And my wife's just checking in at the moment. We're here for one night only. So hopefully uh, we'll get some red claw for you to, uh, to watch us cook up. Um, Red, red claw for people that aren't too sure is like a fresh water, like a little bit of a small lobster, I suppose you could say, or crayfish. And um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, hopefully catch some and also head out and uh, see if we can get a few bass or yellow belly or something. So um, we're going to get the camp set up and um, get the pots ready and we're going to head out. So let's get out there. By law, guys, um, I'm allowed four pots. We've got two people on the boat today. My wife's with me, Danielle. Um, so I'm allowed eight pots today, which is great. Now, you must have a float. You must have your name on there and a telephone number. And the same with a tag as well here by law, um, so that the fisheries uh, are all happy about it. Now, the interesting thing about the red claw here in, um, in Somerset Dam is that they're not native to Somerset Dam. So the problem that we have is actually illegal for me to put them. If I catch red claw in this trap, it's illegal for me to put them back. Okay, they're a pest in here. They're not actually a native. Um, they're a native of uh, a lot further up north. Um, but they're actually, obviously, somebody's put them in here and they've bred like mad. So hopefully we're going to catch them tonight. Pete reckons it's best to put the pots in overnight, especially this time of the year where the water's starting to get a little bit cooler. Okay, so let's show you the trick with the, with the uh, rock melon. I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut this rock melon up for our red claw traps and um, actually red claw pete is the guy you need to speak to if you do come here to somerset caravan park the big four um, find out where he is go to the tackle shop down here it's just right on the uh, on the dam and ask for definitely ask for red claw pete because he's given me a few tips that i'm going to pass on to you guys now all right so here we go we'll tie these this rock melon the actual skin down here so i'm going to throw a cable tie through here just through the softness of the rock melon quite strange that they um they love rock melon but um, i'm told this is the gun bait a little bit tricky but well worth it um, for a good feed of red claw so just come through here come back up through the hole here i don't know if you can see that and um, just push your cable tie through my eyes aren't what they used to be that's for sure okay so we're going to cable tie that there and i'm going to put two cable ties on it so i'll pop another one in there as well so you can see what i've done there we're we going down there danielle you're getting them cable oh they're doing well you're doing well getting them two cable pieces ties. or one? Oh, we'll get two in there okay so danielle has decided she's going to try her method where she's putting rock melon in here and she's just going to throw that straight in there so we'll see who wins hey dan yep you're getting fed you're getting fed up of trying to cable tie them on, aren't yeah. you? Just chuck them in a container. <laughs> and see how you Shop go. it up. Yeah, look at that. Put a few holes in a container. I reckon so you don't good. mess about, do you? Huh? Yeah, too much mucking around, I reckon. Too much mucking around? <laughs> I'm still mucking around. So we're going to have four pots with, um, with rock melon tied to the bottom. And Danielle's going to do four pots without... So she's going to have some plastic containers that we brought along with us and she just put a few holes in them. And uh, yeah, I must admit, she is a little bit quicker at getting them done than me. But having said that, I think we've got the wrong cable ties. So I think we could have done with a bigger cable tie. Don't you, Danielle? 
But you didn't specify the size. The <laughs> I didn't specify the size. Oh, I'm in trouble. All right, I'll just uh, leave it at that, guys. So uh, <laughs> let's just see who wins. So, guys, just coming up on the first pot. I'm going to get Danielle to pull this one because uh, this is her pot. So this is uh, good fun. You've got to get your kids in and uh, do this type of stuff. So hopefully we've got some in there. All right. Okay. Proof in the pudding. Yeah, do you want me to hold that? Okay. Slowly, slowly. So this is the cat food one. No Don't good. Know. Let's have a look. Nothing in it. Oh. Oh. Some fish. Prawns. Oh, we got prawns. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Ah, cool. Oh, we got something. Yeah, there he is. Red Claw, let's get cool. him in. Bring him in. Smells like cat food. We could use the uh, prawns, and prawns for, bait. for bait. Look at all them prawns. Well done. Well, that's one, Danielle. That's for you, not me. Oh, let's well. check the next ones. All right. <laughs> I'll empty them out and we'll, uh, we'll check the next ones. Danielle wants to put the pot back in, so she's decided that she's going to try and grab the, um, the red claw from behind without opening the net. <laughs> just they bit you. Bit. No, nearly. Yeah, you've got to get him around the head. I am getting him around. get his nippers behind him. <laughs> I got him. Yeah. You reckon he's not going to bite me like that? Well, we'll see. Grab him by the head. He can't get you then. I got him by the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is funny. Okay. You got him? I got him, but he's... No, you can't get your hand out. I can't get my hand out. <laughs> go on then. I'm just trying to get him to let go. Okay, well, Danielle is actually uh, wrestling with the red claw. He's grabbing over the, over the what's the name. You really, we do need to open the net then. Um, what we need to do, what I've done here is just got myself an ice slurry. Got in here. I got him. Yeah, okay, okay. So we just put in an ice slurry, and it's the most humane way. There you go. He's only a small one. Okay, and then, like I say, they're illegal, illegal to put these guys back, so we have to keep every one that we catch. So I just pop them in the ice down. Beautiful. And then we need to put a bit of water in there as well. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Yep. Put some ice and that'll just put him to sleep. There you go. He's already falling asleep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We've got seven more pots to go. I'm gonna put this one back in. Put that pot back in. Okay, cool. And we'll pick it up later after we've done a bit of a bass fish, eh? No. Maybe we if we catch some we can give some to Kerry. So not much in that one, Danielle. Mm, not good. No, not good. Lots of little fish and prawns, so we better get them out. Let them go. Yep. Okay, pot seven. Let's see how we go. Nothing. Nothing in that one. Oh, something's been eating it though. Mm. There we go, guys. Not sure what it is, but just using a. Um, bass just using um, a little shrimp that we caught beautiful little bass or bass in a beautiful bass actually here we go just quickly show you that and I'll show you what we did just a minute ago it's only a little bass cool we we'll get this guy back in the water In you go, fella. Hopefully we'll get a 50 centimetre one. Or a 40 centimetre one would be good, but a 50 would be fantastic. They do get a lot of those in here. Yeah, we'll see how we go with that one. That one looks a little bit better. We'll get it down there a little bit quicker too. So I'll just flick him out. These are all the shrimp that we got out of the uh, out of the red claw traps. Oh, 
quite a bit of fish on here, guys. I just need the net. Same technique. I will just wait until I check our red claw traps. We didn't get many in the first one. This is a good bass. I might actually keep this Danny Allen right of a little fillets of bass. What do you reckon? Oh, he's a nice bass. Oh, Jesus. He is massive. Woohoo! Now that's a bass. Have a go at that. Woo! <laughs> now that is a decent bass. Now I don't think I could kill that bass. He's too old. I'm going to put him back. Let's hope we've got some red claw. Hey? Now that is an awesome bass. Woo! My biggest. PB. Let's give him a bit of a measure. So there you go, guys. That's my uh, personal best. 52 centimeters. Absolutely wrapped. That just made my trip. Unbelievable. Now let's get this guy back in the water. I couldn't kill this fish. I'd like somebody else to catch this fish. Okay, just watch your step there, Daniel, while we put this big guy back in. Come on, mate. There he goes. Woo! How good is that? Fantastic. I'm absolutely stoked. Woo! Brilliant. Let's see if we can get another one now. See if Danielle can catch one. Woo! Well guys, we weren't that successful on the uh, red claw. So what I've got is only one red claw, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's got to go two ways. So what I'm going to do is a quick dish, a surf and turf. We've only been here one night. So we uh, caught a beautiful 52, two centimeter bass. I'm absolutely stoked about that. So we haven't done too bad, but I'm definitely coming back here to Somerset Dan to cook some of these beauties up. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to prepare this dish. What I'm going to do is split this guy down the middle. First of all, um, with the intestinal tract, I just want to take this out, out of here. So I just lift this flap up and generally, hopefully you can twist this out, the, uh, the actual flap, the actual um, sort of intestinal tract, or as we call it, the poop chute. So if we hold it straight like so, it should just come straight out, okay? A little bit opposite to the actual prawns that I do, whereas the prawns I'll come out of the head. But with um, crustaceans like this and lobster, um, they all come out the back like that. Okay, now I'm going to split this guy down the middle. And I'm going to leave him whole. Well, sort of like, you know, I'm not going to take his head off, hopefully. Lived him with a sharper knife, that's for sure, but that's okay. It is what it is. Okay, so that's it. So straight down through here. I'm going to clean this head out here because that's uh, quite gunky. It's quite bitter and I don't like to eat the brown meat here. So I'll give that a clean. I'll give it a wash in the water and then we'll get ready to cook. Rinse the heads out. Get down here. We've got a bit of fresh water. Oh, it's a bit muddy. There we go. Just get rid of all that brown out of the head. Clean all that out. They would definitely don't want that yucky stuff so we'll clean that out now the red claw get really really big and um, they're predominantly a night feeder so I haven't got a second crack at these which I'd love to have had a crack at them so at least we got one but some people have been getting a dozen or so but in summer here when you come in summer apparently you know you're getting 10 and 12 in a trap um, unfortunately it's a lot cooler I mean it was 11 degrees last night so obviously they're a little bit slower but that doesn't matter. We're going to make a really nice feed out of this and we're going to do a surf and turf with some steak. I'm going to season my steak now. So I've got some beautiful olive oil going on here. Got some nice rump steak. Uh, a little bit of this uh, Creo Crush sea salt. Really important. Bring your steak up to room temperature before you cook it. Um, so the salt goes on. Looks like quite a lot of salt, but it's actually not. It comes off in the cooking process. And what it does is um, helps um, dry the steak out a little bit and just gives me a really crusty edge now also I've got some a little bit of pepper mix here um, it's a restaurant pepper mix so it's already been done for you from uh, Creo absolutely unbelievable so let's shake a little bit of that on season both sides of the steak okay and um, also I've got some garlic here which I've just cut up and uh, I do have to move fairly quickly reason being is is because we're losing light okay and I've been trying to get some red a little bit more red claw so um you know what it's like you're just always pushing the limits to the edge so yeah so I'm just rushing this through a little bit 
and uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of garlic in here while we cook the steak as well. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is cook my steak. Give this a really good rub with the garlic. It's really nice when you, uh, you know, it's not too garlic. It doesn't burn the garlic, so I just give it a really good rub generally. And then uh, leave the garlic to the side. We can cook that a little bit later on with the vegetables. But just give it a really good rub. Beautiful. And that's starting to warm up as well, which we want. Okay, I preheated the pan, so let's get them in the pan. Sizzling hot, that's what we want when we sear our meat. Beautiful. Want it really, really nice and hot. So, I preheated that for a couple of minutes. Okay, what's really important with steak is, with all pans, they tend to do a have like a little bow in them through the heat going into one area all the time. So it's very important with steaks is that we twist it all the time. I don't mean turning all the time, but just twisting so we get even caramelization on the steak. It's super, super important. Just have a look at those. They're coming up really good at the moment. I want some really nice caramelization. Now I'm gonna flip it again. Now, there's a bit of an old wives tale about flipping steaks. And people say you should only flip it once. But that's not actually true. Okay, guys. Um, it's already been proven. They've done it with um, thermal heating on steaks. That um, you should be turning them constantly. And because um, other, so other, otherwise what happens is the steak starts to cool down too much. So you're always turning it constantly. So now with all this science, they've actually proven that. Okay, these steaks are pretty much rare at the moment. Um, obviously the way you tell you can um, go up your arm and all the way up to your arm up here if it touches like that there's all different ways of doing it but you get used to it and uh, these are pretty rare at the moment so I'm just going to put a little bit of butter in here and um, I'm going to rest this steak for a while because I like my uh, steaks medium rare so I cook them to rare and then I rest them and what I mean by resting is that I'll leave them in a warm place because what happens is when you put the steak into the pan all the blood rushes to the bit all the blood just rushes to the middle and it's just like a balloon it's pretty much ready to just burst out um, as soon as you cut it so what you want to do is just uh, relax the steak so all the muscles just relax I'm just going to baste this now while I'm yakking away too much so I'm just going to baste this with a bit of butter beautiful Can you imagine all them flavors at the moment okay so I've cooked it to rare so I'm basting it with some butter so this hot fat as well He's also cooking the steak and it's giving it a beautiful glaze. So what I was explaining about the meat when it relaxes is that if you put anything hot into a pan, if you shove me in a pan, I tense up straight away. And what we want to do is once we relax the steak, the steak just relaxes and all the juices just go through the steak. So we don't want to cut, it in, cut into it right away. That's looking really good. So I'm just going to pop that now on my chopping board and let it rest. So I've cut some potatoes up really, really small and I've put them in water. Basically, I've got to be careful I don't throw it in the pan like that. Uh, basically, the reason why I do that is so that the potatoes don't oxidise, okay? If you leave them out of the water, they go brown. And that's the last thing that I want to happen. And I've cut them up super small so they fry up really easily. It's just a good way of um, getting a little bit of starch or carbohydrate into you. Um, if you don't have, you know, if you haven't got time to boil something, we can just cook the potatoes up really, really small and they'll just cook up from raw. And we're just going to saute them down. As a uh, halfway cooked, so this is when it's time to throw my onions in here as well. So I've just chopped up basically what we had left over. Right, just going to give that a toss. And we'll let that cook down. Guys, sun's going down quickly, so in with my basil leaves. Just give them a little toss around. And then I'm just going to pop this in here. In my pan. And uh, we're getting this nice and hot now for our red claw. So everything's ready just now for my uh, red claw to go in. Okay. Now with red claw, um, these guys are juveniles or are a female because the males are the ones that um, actually have the big red claws. Okay, so these are either female or juvenile. And um, so what I normally do is now is I cook them just on this one side with the shell down. And what that does is protects all the meat, stops them from drying out. And the very last minute, I'm going to Monte Albert or put some butter over the top with some garlic. 
and, um, and some parsley as well is just going to go over the top of that and that will finish off cooking. As you can see how small these um, red claw are, uh, I do this with lobster as well so I cook it just on the, the shell side as you can see how they're going a beautiful orange colour there. So I cook it on the shell side and that stops it from drying out the flesh and then we've only just got to turn it over and just give it a light sear. Just here, just in the side of the pan here, I drop in my garlic and we get that going. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is put in a little, couple of knobs of butter. And we're just going to throw some butter over the top of this. And uh, we're going to put, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in here as well. So the wind's come up a little bit. So what I'm getting there is some really good flavours from the um, butter. This is sort of like uh, making its own sort of the top. And this keeps it super moist. Really, really moist. Uh, in with some parsley. A bit of parsley in there gives it a little bit of earthy flavor as well and as you can see how I'm just cooking the flesh really gently just down here so the last thing I do and the Sun's come out for us which is great is a squeeze of lemon juice and into the sauce here and that's just a self sourcing marinade a little bit more marinade over the top fantastic Done. Let's play. So guys, I'm just going to slice this steak up. And it's just beautifully pink in the middle. Okay, just a nice spoonful of uh, vegetables goes in the middle. Beautiful meat. Let me try that. Oh my god. <laughs> Beautiful. And then, our red claw to top off. Oh, that's still very, very hot. drizzle a little bit of this oil over the top of our steak and there you go surf and surf sunset there we go guys the sun's going down probably have a beer or a champagne with this we've got some red claw uh, surf and surf all the way from Somerset down I just can't wait to come back now look guys we're here every Friday here at the hook and the cook who knows where we're gonna be next week so we'll look forward to seeing you every Friday. And don't forget to subscribe and please comment guys. We always get back to you. Cheers guys. Thanks for watching. So there you go down here. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the extra red cloth. Ooh, the extra half a little bit. Oh, there you go. You don't melt that red cloth taste like. Oh, that's really nice. Is it? Wow. Really good. Like for a freshwater sort of crayfish. That's good, the eh? flavours are beautiful. That awesome. is so nice. To give a big thank you to all our sponsors for 2019. 